into detail of all the price of the parts and hopefully give you all an overall cost of making this bike. But first of all, a couple of small jobs to be getting on with. When I put the motor into the frame, it was extremely tight and left hardly any room for all the wiring. So I have drilled two holes in the plastic cover and I've routed the speed sensor and rear lighting wiring through here. To do this, I had to cut through the speed sensor wire and then later add an external connector. Now surely you must be thinking, there must be an easier way to do this, and it is. I just chose to do it the hard way. So I went onto eBay and bought a car type electrical connector and it was a bit larger than I would have liked, but it will do the job. So let's get on with a bit of wiring and soldering. With a bit of soldering and putting all the pieces of the connector together, I ended up with the finished article. I also purchased some cut-off brake sensors that work by placing a magnet near the sensor. The cable that comes applied is too long, so a bit more soldering to shorten the length. So there you go, the finished article. And I know you're thinking, he has used a different colour heat shrink. But I am covering it with a stretchy black plastic material. So after all that, let's get to the price breakdown. Let's start with the most expensive parts which is the frame, which is £650, and the Pafang motor, which is £790, and also import tax will be added. The front wheel is from Triton Cycles and cost £84.99, and the front wheel was an eBay purchase at £48. Another eBay purchase was the front forks, and the price was £107.34. There are many other smaller parts and I will put a list at the end of the video and all the links will be in the description.
The Andy Kirby battery is £500, but I have been looking at this battery for £337.71. I have also spent money on various bike tools, so you need to keep in mind the cost if you haven't got many tools yourself. 